parents have a large responsibility uh, in helping their kids manage their, their tech time, as well as their own tech time, which acts as a good example. Our kids watch us um, watching a lot of TV or kind of disengaging, they're going to follow suit. So it's really important for parents to set a good example and also have some regulations in their home. It doesn't have to be overly strict, right? It doesn't have to be like no, no phone, no TV, no nothing. Um, but kids have a harder time really planning ahead and organizing what their days are going to look like. And they kind of need their parents to act as that executive functioning um, system for them. They need to teach them here are the rules that are helpful for us. Here's why we do some of these things and, and giving examples that way. But it really is a lot of the parents' responsibility to, to um, enforce that that happens and you know, make sure that it's, it's happening consistently in the home. It's, it is especially important for kids um, on the spectrum to have some of that guidance from parents. Rules are something we usually hate and love at the same time. Uh, we don't like to be forced into something, especially if we feel like we don't like it or it goes against what we want in the moment. But knowing that the rule exists also creates some safety. Uh, I mentioned earlier I worked with um, kids with autism in a group setting. And if we were ever late, it was horrible for them. They feel like maybe they had missed something, maybe we'd cancel, maybe something awful happened, and their anxiety just spiked tremendously. Whereas when we were able to be consistently on time or early, it put their minds at ease much, much greater. And the same thing applies to rules. Uh, when they know a rule exists and we're gonna follow through consistently with that, it lets them know what to expect. And anxiety can go down and they have a sense of direction. Even if they don't always like it, uh, it's still some comfort there for them. So a lot of parents will, will kind of ask this question of like, when do I know like if this is a problem in my house? Like how much is too much tech time? Like what types of media is okay versus what type is not? It's hard to say because each, each individual family is so different uh, in what they value and what they're okay with. But there is kind of a general rule that may help with this uh, and it follows the three Ds. So is it dysfunctional, is it distressing, and is it deviant from the norm? Meaning is it just different from what most other people expect? With the dysfunctional, some of the things we look for in managing tech time is really like, is it getting in the way of them going to school? Uh, going in the way of them doing their homework? Getting in the way of how well they do on their homework? Uh, or just on some of these basic things that they need to do? Are they spending more time on tech where they're not actually like completing their chores or their expectations in the house? That becomes dysfunctional. Uh, it's stopping them from doing the things that we, we think to be helpful. Uh, and so it becomes a problem in that sense. The other one is distressing. And this one's unique because usually with tech time, sometimes we feel like the amount of tech time we're using is distressing, but usually it's like how much is it distressing others? So if parents are really thinking like, wow, I don't like that we're spending so much time watching movies or we're spending so much time doing this thing, that causes a distress to a parent. And if a parent's distressed, they're just gonna have that distress out on the kid. They're gonna express that frustration and say like, hey, I don't want you to play so much. Or I don't want you to be spending so much time just doing nothing. Uh, and so you see the, the distress pretty clearly. So that goes along with the second rule. And then the last one is just deviant from the norm. Right? Or is how much time we're spending on the tech different from what a lot of other families are doing? And this one's harder to judge because it's a wide variety. And like I said, people have different ideas of what's okay and what's not. This is why it's helpful to have some of the kind of the national standards or recommendations from, from different health agencies saying about you don't really want to do two hours or more. Uh, it should be two hours or less kind of each day. That gives a, a basic rule, although of course it needs to be adjusted for each individual family. Uh, and it also doesn't account for weekends when people tend to spend a little bit more time or summer breaks even. Um, but having some sort of like con uh, some sort of idea of what you want in your family and as long as it's kind of fitting those three areas, the dysfunctional, distressing and, and deviant from the norm, um, will give you a, a pretty good sense of whether it's something you want to shift or whether you're doing okay with where you're at.